Hi, everybody. My name is Itai. And I'm the creator of a game called Mushroom 11. Um, the game is not out yet. It's supposed to launch next year. Um, but it got some nice attention. I'm going to show you a little bit of the game, of where I am right now. Um, here's a quick clip. As you can see, the game is all about growth, uh, progression, cutting pieces, uh, sacrifice of pieces, and uh, it's kind of my, my take on uh, platformers. Um, so the game started in Global Game Jam 2012. Um, if you remember, the theme was uh, the Ouroboros, which is a snake eating its, its own tail. Um, what I saw here is uh, this creature that cannot survive without uh, consuming its own flesh. And I thought that this would be an interesting uh, core mechanics and eventually uh, an interesting narrative as well. Uh, I decided to start a game about removal and destruction as core mechanics, and that's what you saw in the clip. Um, so the idea was to make, create a, uh, a game about a physics-enabled solar organism just completely grow, uh, grows uh, constantly uh, up to a, a certain uh, size. Uh, as you touch cells, they are immediately removed. The growth is procedural, uh, kind of like game of life style. Uh, if you split the, the, the mushroom into, piece, into separate pieces, they all become individual and they, each one of them work separately. Uh, then they can reattach later. Um, and I wanted all of this to run well on my uh, low-end uh, iPad 1 device. And that was more of a personal challenge that I uh, put for myself. Um, really, there is no need to do that any, uh, anyway right now, but I, it's something I just wanted to do. I still kind of do. Um, for the prototype, what I did uh, is the first thing was try to decide what to do with a, a, as colliders and uh, how to create this uh, mechanism uh, and what, are, what is the shape made of. So it, was, it started as like a, a, a batch of many cubes. Um, that was way too heavy for the collision system. So I removed all the cubes and only left the ones at the perimeter. Um, now, oh, by the way, um, I, after seeing the, the grand 2D physics system that they're announced today, I was actually thinking of like maybe just, you know, playing the game for 30 minutes because this is not going to be relevant anymore very soon. But let's just carry on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Part of it is, uh, I, I basically just looked at it and uh, thought about the three months of uh, coding changes that I need to do. Um, so just, let's just carry on for now. Um, all right, so I was thinking, and I'm still going to think that in three months, uh, why not just use a mesh collider uh, and, and go with, uh, with cubes and that in, in the first place? Um, the reason is that every time I need to change the collider, which means many times per frame, um, it requires a remap of the entire uh, mesh. And that's a very heavy operation. Uh, also, there's a problem with uh, two concave uh, mushrooms or any shapes, a uh, collision between them uh, sometimes results in weird uh, 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 completion of the concave part, uh, so it's not realistic. So I decided to go with primitive collection, um, which means many more colliders, but any change in a sing single cell will only be relevant for a single collider. Um, so. The question is whether or not I'm gonna work just with the perimeter or fill up the entire shape with a lot of colliders. Um, obviously, the, the problem in the prototype was a lot of pass-throughs. Uh, two, two mushrooms just collide with each other and then enter each other, as well as other elements on the scene. Um, so I decided to go with packed. Uh, I 
started to think wh which kind of primitive am I going to use, uh, whether it, it is a, a, a sphere or, or boxes or whatnot. I decided to go with spheres or capsules it, from design perspective. I just wanted this mushroom to be able to tumble and roll and, and for that I, was a, I, I would make a lot of sacrifices even for performance. That was the most important thing. So obviously to use many spheres is still too heavy for collision detection. Um, so am I going to try to optimize for the number of colliders, which means uh, make a lot of boxes and just uh, apply some uh, round corners, or just the number of changes, which means many more colliders, uh, but more simple colliders. So I chose parallel capsules, which is my colli collider uh, structure. Um, so I have one capsule per line, and which means that every resize, every growth or removal means just a single resize on a primitive, very, very simple uh, capsule, uh, which is very, very fast. Um, if I want to make a hole in the middle of the line, I would de duplicate the, the capsule into two, change the, each of the sides, or if I want to create a cell in the middle of the line, I will just combine them, remove one of the sides and combine them into one longer, um, longer capsule. So the results were 20 frames per second on my iPad 1, which is a pretty big improvement, um, and no pass-throughs, obviously. And I introduced an obscure, rare physics crash that actually was with me for almost a year in production. Um, all right, so this whole thing, all, all the different versions of parallel capsules is an ongoing process, it took a year. So um, the second version was introducing the, the pool. Instead of instantiating, which is a very uh, um, ineffective uh, operation, what I did is I pre-created, pre-instantiated a lot of capsules, put them in a pool, and every time I need um, a, new a new collider, I just take one from the pool. I went, then just resize it to the right size and put it in the, in the mushroom in whatever uh, area it needs to be and put it there. And of course, if the pool is empty, I will refill it, but also if the game is idle, meaning that nothing happens, no removal, uh, no, uh, no growth, then I can replenish it to make sure that when I do need it, it's gonna be uh, ample with a lot of uh, uh, capsules. Uh, the third version of the, this uh, mechanism was the uh, multi-size capsule uh, pools. So the resize and reparenting, both of them are pretty heavy operations. So I tried to minimize at least one of them. So in order to avoid the resizing, I made many pools, one for one cell, two cell, three cell, and so on. Um, so when I need a uh, a line length of say six, I would just go to that uh, particular pool, take my six, six long uh, capsule, put it in place. All I need to do is just reparent it. Um, and as always, just replenish when it's idle. Um, of course, not all the pools have to be pre instantiated to the same size. I, I'll need a lot of one through 10, but uh, 20, 20 cell long cells is, are very rare, so I just need a few of them. And most importantly, if it gets, if it gets resized by growth or removal while it's in play, then eventually it'll return to a different pool. Okay, fast forward to um, two months ago. Uh, version four of my parallel capsule solution. Uh, so I'm now using a preset capsule pools with no resize at all. And the reason for that, as I try to show here uh, in the image, is the fact that I realized after a lot of discussions with the, the, the good people uh, at Unity, it, there was a certain bug or unwanted behavior when uh, when, with regard to a resize of a capsule. And after a lot of triangulation figuring out, I figured out it, it has to do with resizing a capsule while it's in collision. That you can see this right 
now on with this mushroom uh, bound around this uh, elevator thing. If I try to resize the capsule that is right now touching the, the elevator, that would actually crash. And it would crash anywhere between editor and iOS and whatever platform I tried. The problem is it, it was very rare because, um, you know, it's just like the probability for this to happen is not huge. And when I showed this game uh, a couple of months ago uh, in GDC, I was dreading, everybody <laughs> who knew me knew that I was really dreading that this was going to happen while I'm showing the game, the, my five minutes in the spotlight. But it didn't, so yay. But I fixed this problem by not resizing at all. So what I do now instead is every time I need a, a bigger or smaller capsule, I just put this capsule back in its pool, take another one instead and put it in place. In fact, it's actually more efficient than resizing the capsule. Um, more or equal. Uh, okay, so um, again, redist uh, re replenish, redistribute when idle. Um, all right, going, back, going into growth, the growth mechanism. In the prototype, all I need to do is figure out if a cell was uh, a perimeter cell or not. That I do by looking at the number of neighbors. If the number of neighbors is lower than four, it means that this is a perimeter cell, and I have a big list of all perim perimeter cells between all the different mushrooms, and I just choose one in random and grow in a random direction from it. Uh, that was ugly and not efficient. Uh, it looked very hectic. It used to grow into, back into your finger, into the mouse, and it was not very fun. So this is what I do now. I have a, a linked list of all the perimeter cells, same, same idea, but this time the list is just a cycling list. Every time I look at the first one uh, on that list, and I am comparing it to this value between zero and one and, uh, that I just randomly choose. And if that first cell is uh, lower than that value, then I would grow from that cell. Now, here's the thing. If that cell uh, was recently removed, or as you can see here in the image, um, some of the cells are charred be because I just removed some pieces around it. And that signifies a lower chance for regrowth. So these cells will not grow in the next few seconds which means that other cells will, will grow instead. So I can actually f shape my, my uh, growth and m the, my trajectory of growth to wherever I want to go. So, uh, and to, to, to emphasize this, I actually added an, a higher chance for recently grown cells. So if a cell has just grown, the new cell has even higher chance of regrowth, which means that you will always try to continue the growth away from the finger, unless, of course, I remove that cell, and then it removes, it lowers the chance, et cetera, et cetera. And in, as time passes, it gradually grows back to one. So they all eventually just, the charring rim, it disappears, et cetera. Um, we'll talk about splitting in a second, but if, in case there is splitting, and if you, I have a few mushrooms, the mushroom that's closer or more progressed towards the end of the level or the end of the checkpoint uh, has a higher chance for regrowth. So the ones behind are eventually left to die. Um, and that makes growth and movement so much more uh, fluid, fluent. Um, all the physical, uh, physics changes uh, happen while the rigid body is asleep. This is very, very important uh, also for, for uh, performance, but uh, in addition to that, it's every time I do, I, I grow a new cell, which means I, I remove the capsule and put another one instead uh, or, or, or whatnot, or do some splitting or, or, or uh, reattaching. I do this while all the rigid bodies are asleep. The reason is that every time I add or change a, a collider within a rigid body, it automatically computes uh, the force that is uh, uh, caused by changing the center of mass, which means that if I add a cell to the right, it will add some uh, force in the negative, in the, in the opposite direction, which may, will make the whole thing jitter. So um, 
I will put this, the, the shape, to, the rigid body to sleep, I make the change, then I wake it up. Also, as you can see here, I will never grow in, uh, into colliders. Uh, for two reasons. First and foremost, this is a design decision. The whole idea of the game, I wanted this to be a, this uh, fungal uh, organism that just grows into cracks and really has no power of its own. Uh, it cannot open doors, it cannot push onto anything. If, it, if you want to open doors, you will try to tumble on it, use your uh, velocity or momentum, or use other objects uh, in place. Uh, so that is a design decision. But in addition to that, because this is not gradual, if I have, a, if I want to grow one cell, that cell will just become, uh, uh, it will be nowhere to be found and then immediately there, which means that it will ne have next to infinite amount of force into that position. So there will be a, a near infinite amount of force uh, on the opposite direction on myself, which will cause some hectic movement on the rigid body. So never grow into uh, existing colliders. So every time I have a, a cell I want to grow, I want to make sure that that area is completely empty. All right, splitting, a uh, very integral part of uh, the game. Uh, there, obviously there's no built-in split test in, in any rigid body. There's, the rigid body doesn't know, the object doesn't know how many uh, uh, colliders uh, are, are in the game or in the object or whether or not they're con interconnected or if there are any islands. So I need to do this manually. So I would wait until there is a removal break, meaning that I'm not doing anything uh, uh, at the moment because this is a very heavy operation. And I, do a, I would do a flood fill to figure out if there's an island. Once the flood fill is over, and you know, of course nothing is running while I do the FUD fill, then I would count the number of painted cells, and uh, if that number is lower than the number of uh, cells in the mushroom, meaning this is an island and I would just separate it, put it in a different mushroom. Um, this is, of course, this happens a few times per second, makes, making this operation slow and choppy. So I came up with a new approach, call it, uh, I call it the dynamic flood fill. I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, so I'm visualizing, visualizing this uh, with some colors. Obviously, this is not what's happening. So um, each of those colors represent flood groups. And it's, they, they all start from a single perimeter cell that I just created. If I just remove the cell, I create a new perimeter cell, I start a flood group from that cell. Um, each of those flood groups uh, expands uh, individually. So one cell at a time, basically. So the red one goes one cell, then the purple, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I would cap the number of total flood cells per frame to X. Right now it's 24. So there are no more than 24 expansions uh, per frame, which is nothing. It's, it, you, you don't even notice it. And once a flood group touches another group, I mark them as neighbors. Now, if a, if a group is complete, they can't move anymore, expand anymore, I would check all its neighbors, meaning its immediate neighbors as well as neighbors, neighbor, etc. If all those neighbors are um, complete as well, then I would count the number of cells that I painted between all those neighboring groups. And if they're all blocked, I'm checking the island, if the, and then I just remove it, put it in a different uh, uh, mushroom. Um, this comes with a, a few other uh, interesting perks, like if a, a cell is removed, then all I need to do is invalidate that group. I don't need to invalidate the entire island. Also, if there's a new cell coming out of an existing group, touching an existing group, then I will just immediately paint it because, you know, it's, uh, I get it for free. But if it's not coming out of an existing group, then I would just ignore it because it will eventually get painted. Um, and the nice thing about that is, is that if I uh, remove the, the, an island, I don't need to invalidate anything because the other groups will persist after the splitting. And if there's another island, like sometimes you just grind a lot of uh, cells, it will just continue to do that automatically. And I just got that for free. Um, let me show you how it looked. Yeah, 
as you can see, this, uh, this is a little slowed down a little bit just so we can see what's happening, but the amount of time I'm actually spending on flood filling is marginal, and now it runs really, really fast. All right. All right, reattachments, that's pretty simple. Um, I look for two shapes that are 90 degrees rotation, uh, up, you know, like 90 or 180 or zero or 270. Um, and I am looking for at least face, one face-to-face -face touch um, because if it, sometimes they would collide corner to corner. If I will try to attach them, then on the next flood fill, they're gonna re-separate and then re reattach and re-separate so on. So I wanna make sure that uh, at least one face is touching another face. Then what I would do is I would animate the new uh, acquired mushroom into place in a kinematic order. Um, first of all, I make sure that the new final position is empty, otherwise I'll have the same problem as I said before, I don't wanna grow into existing colliders. And I will acquire all the colliders, I will recreate them in the orientation that I need. In this case, I change it from vertical to horizontal and I would apply a little bit of particle animation. Yay, um, this, after all these changes, I was able to run this game on, uh, in 40 frames per second on my iPad 1, which means I can load it up with more features and push it down again. All right, uh, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna run through the visuals uh, quickly. Um, there is a dynamic mesh that I, recreate, I created myself. Um, it is, looks free, pretty heavy, a lot of things are going on, but it's actually only using two textures, and the reason is, the, again, the iPad 1, uh, GLES 1 uh, limitation. Uh, but uh, there is a per vert vertex color that I'm using for some uh, breathing animation inside, as well as consuming creatures and other, uh, like fire and, and acid and whatever. All right, so it's all based on the cell sheet for the silhouette of each of those cells. And you can see that the, uh, it's all based on the number and the mask of the neighbors. So neighbor on the left is one, neighbor on the right is, is two, neighbor uh, on top is four. So zero means no neighbors, one is one on the left, two is one on the right, three is both, et cetera, et cetera. So all I do is I have a lookup based on the mask of the neighbors and then I create uh, the cells. Um, I'm using some 25% of uh, overlapping between the different cells, and the reason for that is to make sure that internal, internal corners also look nice, um, so it all looks flowing uh, uh, as much as I can. Um, and I'm reusing the first cell sheet texture for both the silhouette as well as overlay uh, to make this border highlighted. Um, so, and in addition to that, we have the, the background animation um, that runs on, on the back surface. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm using this eight keyframe loop. And as you can see, it's unlike other keyframes, all those keyframes combine into each other. Uh, they tile perfectly uh, one to the, to the next as well as vertically to itself. The reason for that is Unlike a, other games, I don't know what my size is gonna be. Um, this would fit any size of mushroom, uh, uh, no matter how big or, or small. As well as the fact that as I re remove some cells from the right side, I will pan on that keyframe, uh, so I, wouldn't, I don't really know what's, uh, what part of the keyframe I would need. So it will never show um, uh, seams between the keyframes, and that was very important. Um, and the way I'm uh, changing it is just basically, oh, in, in order to create, um, to, to batch all those mushrooms into one draw call, what I'm doing is I, well, every, all of them use the same material, obviously, so all I need to do is go to that background texture and change the offset of that texture, and that would apply to all the, to all the mushrooms on the scene. And I just apply the sine wave going back and forth to apply some sort of uh, bloodstream into the veins there, 
and uh, that's it. That's Mushroom 11. Thank you very much. I don't know if we have some time for questions. I don't think we have time for questions. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes. Um, no, because even a single touch can remove uh, an, uh, any number of cells. So if you have few fingers, then I, I would just remove more cells, so it, it will just do the same thing. Microwave questions? Yep, microwave questions. All right, thank you very much.